Taylor Lewan was carted off the field tonight, making him the second player in his many nights to unfortunately need to be backboarded and taken off the field. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Daryl Taylor and Taylor Lewan, two players who are carted off the field this weekend with sort of similar circumstances, but the same underlying concern for an injury. I'm gonna compare and contrast these a little bit to teach you guys about what we're doing as medical providers on the field during situations like this. First off with Taylor Lewan here, when he dove onto the top of this pile, we could see him roll over here and initially big difference between Daryl Taylor, Luan appeared to be essentially unconscious after he kind of dove onto the pile and when the medical providers got out there. We see him move the leg a little bit, but initially appeared to be unconscious unlike what we saw with Daryl Taylor. Taylor, on the other hand, looked to be alert. We can see him kind of roll over here after being involved in that tackle. And then as he was on the ground, he appeared to be moving his hands and responding a little bit more to the medical providers on the field. In any situation like this, the first thing we're doing as medical providers when we get out to the athlete is checking to see if they're conscious and checking to see if they have a pulse. Cardiac arrest is way more important than any sort of a spine injury in these circumstances. And so the number one thing you're doing when you get out there is checking to see if they're conscious right away and then checking a pulse. Here as the medical staff gets out there, that's gonna be the first thing they're doing. The individual here at the head is sort of in charge and what they're gonna be basically trying to assess is whether or not number one, he's conscious. And then I guarantee at this point, they felt for a pulse, they've made sure he's not in cardiac arrest. Now, right away, you can see they don't flip him over, they don't start doing CPR. So we can assume that the athlete has a pulse and we're just dealing with a neurologic injury. In the case of Taylor, same sort of thing. Medical providers get out here on the field, the person in charge at his head is working to stabilize that spine. Generally, we like to actually be up kind of underneath the helmet, sort of right on top of the neck, but sometimes it's hard to do with shoulder pads. This provider here is gonna be asking about his symptoms, making sure he's conscious, but they've done that initial test to check for pulse. So once we ensure they have an airway, they're breathing and they have good circulation, we move into our disability or a neurologic screen. Here with Luan, we can see the provider at his head kind of positions his hands sort of twisted around on the back of his neck. What he's doing here is he's stabilizing his cervical spine. The reason he has his hands rotated like that is ultimately what they're gonna to have to do to get him on a backboard is roll him. And because of how he has his hands positioned, they're gonna actually roll him back in this direction to where these two individuals are on that side. So you flip your hands so that when you turn the athlete, you're in that proper position. Same thing with Taylor. We're making sure we stabilize that cervical spine because we're worried about a neck or a spinal cord injury. Thankfully, in the case of Luan, we already heard he's being evaluated for a concussion, but he has movement in all of his extremities. Now, movement isn't the only part of the neurologic exam and the function of the nerves. They, of course, also control sensation. And so just because you have movement doesn't mean 100% that everything is normal, but it's certainly a very reassuring sign. But this highlights one of the key parts of evaluating any downed athlete. When Luan comes off the pile here, we can see he's motionless on the ground. He seemingly is unconscious here. And so anytime an athlete is down and is either unconscious or we can't trust their answers because they have altered consciousness from something like a concussion, we assume the worst. We assume they have a spinal cord injury if there was a mechanism that fits and we stabilize their cervical spine until they can be properly evaluated. So for Luan, it doesn't really matter if he has numbness tingling or if he can't move his arms or his legs or if he has pain along the back of his neck. If he has altered consciousness, then you assume there could be a neck injury and you treat it as such. The next thing we see that's similar in both these situations is the player had their face mask removed, but their helmet kept on. In some instances where you have an injury to the spinal cord at a high enough level, you can actually lose the control of the diaphragm or the main breathing muscle. Because again, that loss of breathing is gonna be more serious than just the nerve injury. You need to be able to access the airway in case you have to put a breathing tube in someone's mouth to help them breathe if their lungs fail. You can't do that if somebody has their face mask covering their mouth. And so that's why we see the face mask taken off for both Luan here and then also Daryl Taylor. Thankfully, Taylor checked out okay, and so far it sounds like Luan is doing well also. Most of the time when we see athletes backboarded like this, thankfully things turn out to be okay. But it's still crucial that the medical teams take these necessary steps because there are going to be those times where things don't turn out okay, and the best you can stabilize that spine, stabilize that neck, get them on the backboard and get them proper evaluation, the better their outcome can hopefully be. When we talk about mechanisms here, it's important to understand that the neck has some natural curvature to it. And so whenever we straighten the neck and have an axial load or an impact comes into the top of the head, we run more risk of damaging the spine. Here as Luan was coming down, of course, a combination of this, like I said, was that he appeared to be unconscious, but he has this axial load as he's falling into a Bills player. He's got his neck straight. 
and that load kind of goes into his neck. We also see it twist a little bit, which can certainly compress the spinal cord and the nerves exiting that left side of his neck. In the case of Daryl Taylor, again, he kind of came into this whole scrum of players and his head, again, got impacted axially from the top, kind of compressing that neck, compressing that head backwards a little bit. So both of these situations, you had a mechanism that fit for a possible spinal cord injury, and you had athletes that were either altered level of consciousness or had a concerning enough exam or symptoms to suggest a possible nerve injury that they required treatment to immobilize and protect their spine. That's it for the video, everybody. I hope it was educational to take a look at two recent scenarios here where athletes have had to be put on a backboard because of concern for a spinal cord injury. Some similarities, but also some differences between these two situations. Hopefully both athletes turn out to be just fine. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.